In old school Dungeons and Dragons, there is quite a few things that you have to track. Uh, for example, you have to track when encounters occur, you have to track when torches are gonna run out, when your character has to rest, when spell effects end, and so forth. And this can be kind of burdensome and stressful, especially for new dungeon masters. There are some tools out there that can help you with this. I've seen wheels or little spreadsheets where you can tick boxes to help you remember this stuff. But one of my favorite systems is called the hazard system. This is a system created by Brendan S. over on the blog Necropraxis, which takes all the different things you might have to track and puts it onto a single D6 die. Now the hazard system is simplified somewhat, but I think the loss of some of that granularity is really offset by a much greater ease of use. It's also released under the Creative Commons license, which means that anyone can use it or hack it for their own games. I'll put a link to that right down there in the description below. It's also the system that I use in Nave Second Edition, my role-playing game, which is in its final days over on Kickstarter right now. Link to that is also in the description below. So what is the hazard system? Basically, it's a D6, and you roll this D6 once every turn or every unit of time. And that unit of time can vary depending on the mode of play that we're in, as I will show you in just a second. Generally speaking, each of the six sides of the die correspond to the following. One represents a setback that might occur. Two, then it's a fatigue where some sort of a drain happens on your resources. Three would be an expiration where something runs out. Usually this is a timer of some kind. A four is locality, something happens in your environment. Five is a percept, so you notice something. And six is an advantage or a free space where nothing happens. Now these generic results are going to be interpreted in particular ways depending on the mode of play that you're currently in. So for example, if you were in a dungeon having a dungeon crawl, then the results would look like this. Number one, the setback would now be an encounter. Uh, number two, fatigue, would be you have to rest and consume rations, one per party, or suffer minor harm. Uh, expiration, number three, would be expire transient dungeon conditions, like light or spell. So this would be like your torches going out. Number four, locality, would be shift the dungeon state or some other local change. Number five, percept, would be you notice spore or a clue regarding the next encounter. And number six, advantage, would be you just get a free dungeon turn where nothing bad happens. The hazard system essentially works as a kind of engine of gameplay, where the players play through a normal dungeon, for example, and the hazard die is throwing complications at them. Encounters are happening, their torches are going out, there's possibly advantages too, like they might notice something or they get a free turn, but it's rarely boring. Something is always happening that the players are going to have to respond to. In my game, Nave 2E, I tweaked a number of these results for the dungeon. So for example, for fatigue, you no longer have to eat rations because uh, rations are something, they're like a resource that I prefer to be used in the wilderness rather than in dungeons. For number three, the expiration result, I tweaked that so that it just expires your torches and not your spell effects, which I prefer to actually track, though you could easily add that back on. And finally, for number four, location, what I did was I actually expanded that result and created a large random table of possible dungeon shifts. So you have lots of ideas of ways to tweak the environment in the dungeon, kind of like dungeon weather, to keep things exciting for the players. Now, some of you may notice that there's actually a higher likelihood of having an encounter in the hazard system than in traditional D&D. In traditional D&D, it's every two turns you roll a d6, and there's a one in six chance of an encounter happening, whereas in the hazard system, every turn, there's a one in six chance. So it's twice as likely. Now, this isn't a big deal for me, since I actually like having a higher odds of encounter, and since uh, you're going to be using reaction rolls anyway, they're not likely to always be hostile anyway. Let's look at some ways that the hazard system can be adapted to other situations. For example, wilderness travel. In wilderness travel in the hazard system, each turn is a whole day. In Nave second edition, it's actually one sixth of a day because they divide each day into six watches. But however the length of your turn is, you just have to roll a d6. And again, the hazard system will provide a complication that you have to deal with. Number one, the setback is an encounter just as it is in the dungeon turn. Number two, fatigue is rest and consume rations, one per person or suffer minor harm. Now in Nave second edition, I actually, I do have rest here, but I take the use of rations and I move it down to the next one, or I use that uh, as a way to tax your rations. Um, in the official hazard system, it says that for expiration, you expire a transient wilderness condition, which is a little bit vague to me. I use that to actually expire things in your inventory, like rations, or perhaps things like a monster parts that you've cut off and you're trying to sell at the market or turn into potions. 
Um, Nave Second Edition is a very resource driven game. You have a lot of slots you're carrying stuff in and traveling for long periods of time across the wilderness means that stuff in your inventory could start degrading or expiring if you're not careful. Number four, locality is shift weather or other local change. And in Nave, I have a whole random table system for generating new weather depending on the season. Number five is a percept, a spore or clue regarding the next encounter. And again, six is advantage, a free wilderness turn where fortunately nothing bad happened. Those are the two systems that I use the hazard system for in Nave, just for dungeons and wildernesses. However, in the full hazard system, you can also use it for havens or city turns, and you can also use it for combat. A haven turn in the hazard system could be up to weeks of time, and that could give you an encounter, a shortage in the city, you could clear one or more haven conditions that could build up, you could advance the season or other local change, there could be a foreshadowing of a looming disaster, or you could get a full recovery where your characters are fully healed. If you wanted to use the hazard system in combat, you would actually roll the hazard die every round, and that would generate complications like opponents acting first or additional encounters, right? Like there's uh, reinforcements that have arrived. You could suffer minor harm from weariness if engaged in melee combat. Your torches could burn out. The battlefield could shift around. There could be a clue to the next encounter or a free combat turn where nothing bad happens. So that's how the hazard system works. It's a very clean, simple structure that you can easily modify to fit whatever your campaign is based around. It's always putting pressure on the players and making sure that there is always something to react to every turn. There's never a dull moment when you're using the hazard system. So hopefully that is useful to you. Please let me know if you plan on hacking the system or if you have used the hazard system in your own games. Remember that I have a link to the PDF so that you can read the whole system and how it works down in the description below. And also remember to check out Nave Second Edition, which is in its final days over on Kickstarter. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you soon.